Well, welcome everyone. Uh, good morning. Um, thank you all for being here at Joshua Lindbergh's Final Defense. The title of his study is Am I Ready? Um, which is a great question. Are you ready <laughs> today? Um, I think it's, it's really nice to see um, his hard work and the process of how he has looked at music education, pulled from what he's done in his professional career. And I'm really excited to see his findings um, and have him discuss his research. So am I ready how high school instrumental music teachers perceive their undergraduate programs, prepared them for a professional career? Um, I'm Dr. Reka Rajan. I am the chair and methodologist, and we have our two wonderful readers here, Dr. Baker and Dr. Sanford. Um, Joshua, I'm going to mute and turn off my camera while you present. Okay, so take it away. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Rajan. And again, welcome to everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, as she said, my uh, dissertation is titled, How Am I Ready? How high school instrumental music teachers perceive their undergraduate programs prepared them for a professional career. Um, I just wanted to start out with a quick acknowledgement. Number one, to my wife, Lisa, thank you for helping me. Um, to my parents, Steve and Karen, for always supporting me throughout all my crazy adventures. And then to my dissertation committee, Dr. Rajan, Dr. Baker, and Dr. Sanford, thank you for your guidance and uh, reading through all of my paper and helping me through it. So thank you very much. The agenda for today, I'm going to touch briefly on the proposal review, again, just as a recap to understand the basics and fundamentals of what my research was focused on. Um, then we're going to look at the data analysis plan, the analyzed data, um, conclusions, recommendations, future ideas and ideas for change, and then feedback, questions, and conversations. Um, again, my name is Joshua Lindbergh. I'm currently a high school band and orchestra teacher. I have a Bachelor's of Arts in Music Education, a Bachelor's of Music in Piano Performance, and a Master's of Music in Wind Band Conducting, all from Eastern Washington University. I'm currently on the Music Curriculum Committee at Kennewick School District. Um, I was a transfer from Concordia, Portland. I was able to join Concordia, Chicago um, during the transition period and get, hit the ball running. Um, I'm a nationally certified teacher of music through Music Teachers National Association, and I believe and I am an advocate for music is for everyone. That's a picture for me from daycare. I started piano very young. Um, diving right in, so my research topic and problem, which we've already looked at, the topic is instrumental music teacher preparation programs and the current instrumental music teacher's perceptions. Um, the problem was that music teacher preparation courses do not align in the Pacific Northwest and are based on the regional understanding of the requirements of music education. Um, the students who are graduating with their music degree do not only find professional jobs in that region, but they graduate and must adapt to meet the needs of the school districts and students they are teaching. The purpose, um, the purpose of this research study was to examine the perceptions of graduates from a music teacher preparation program regarding, regarding their music teacher preparations. Um, the research questions that guided this whole process was how do high school, high school instrumental music teachers feel that their undergraduate program prepared them for a professional career? Subquestion one was, what are the components of high school instrumental music teachers' undergraduate programs that were utilized in their daily teaching practices? Subquestion two, during these professional teaching career, what classes or teaching strategies would high school instrumental music teachers have liked to experience as part of their undergraduate program? And then subquestion number three, what recommendations do high school instrumental music teachers have for strengthening undergraduate music teacher programs? Those are the questions that guided my whole research. Again, to um, get our minds wrapped around the idea, the framework for this study explored the effectiveness of teacher preparation program, producing highly effective music teachers based on the interviews of current music teachers. On the right of your screen um, is the framework of how I designed this, um, the stereotypical and the way that universities are set. High school intermusic music teachers are produced by going to your undergraduate for teacher training um, under the undergraduate with music education classes undergraduate. Once you graduate using professional development, which is the post undergraduate, and then learn skills basically from on the job post undergraduate. And that's what should produce a high school instrumental music teacher. And my, my study was to see, is that working? Is there a way to change that? What can we do better um, in the Pacific Northwest? Again, there was five sections that I uh, looked at for my uh, literature review. 
all under music education preparation programs. They are history of reform in music teacher preparation programs, evolution of trends in music teacher preparation programs, current trends in music teacher preparation programs, the effectiveness of music teacher preparation programs, and then the preparation to teach diverse learners. Along with doing that research, I also looked at the nine universities in Washington State that um, have a Bachelor's of Music Education um, and saw or, uh, research the total minimum credits that are required to retain that degree. And you can see that on the right as well. Um, this was a narrative inquiry. Um, the data was taken from the interviews and artifacts provided, but all the required classes and total credits needed to graduate from each university offering a bachelor's degree in instrumental music education from the state of Washington was collected and compared to see similarities and differences between the graduating teachers. The setting for this uh, was high school teachers from the Pacific Northwest who have obtained a four-year university and it's a bachelor's in music education. Uh, they are currently an instrumental music teacher and they have taught for a minimum of two years. Um, the sampling strategy that I utilized, a email went out from our Washington Music Educator Association Executive Director to all the active instrumental music teachers. Um, I, I had a rough estimate of numbers that was a total of 1,016 high schools in Washington State and 884 that are public school teachers and 132 that are private schools. And there should, at a minimum, be at least one instrumental music teacher at each one of the schools, as long as that tracked correctly. From that, I was able to get seven total teachers who responded to the email and agreed to be scheduled for an interview. I'll explain later, but after further discussion, one of the participants um, did not match the required specifications. Again, I'll explain it, but I, the first one was a bachelor's of music education, and this individual had a bachelor's of music composition and then added on a music education post-baccalaureate um, program. Um, the sampling size, each participant, again, had a bachelor of music education degree and had taught for a minimum, oop, I wrote the wrong thing, I apologize, minimum of two years and are currently a high school instrumental music teacher. My uh, participants were all given a number of one through six and each were transcribed and compiled into a well-organized table for easy access and reading. Here is how I was able to um, quantize the data and be able to refer to it quickly. Each interview uh, interviewee was uh, given a number one through six. As you see in between five and six, NA was the um, individual who had the music composition degree. Um, the degrees that I wrote there was just a BA in music education. Some of them were slightly different, but that was not um, needed to be represented in the data. The differences would be one university offered a bachelor's of arts in education with a speciali specialization music versus another university had a bachelor of music education degree. Uh, upon comparing the required um, credits, it was all the same. It just the title of the degree was slightly different. Um, I also, in the interviews, asked them about their post-undergraduate. One of my um, interviewees did not receive a post-undergraduate degree, while the other five, six, if you include the um, interview who wasn't um, included, all have a master's or beyond degree. Um, all of their interviews were transcribed, except for the bachelor's of music composition. And then, as I will talk a little later too, the artifacts acquired, I did not get any artifacts from the interviewees. Um, here was my original planned collection tools and instruments. Number one was the interview questions, which was the primary source of data collected. These were all going to be conducted through Zoom or another video conferencing software. We ended up using Zoom the whole time. Artifacts that I had asked from each one of the interviewees were the undergraduate college transcripts and course descriptions. The caveat with that was that I would not be looking at any of the grades. I would just be simply looking at what classes they took. And then journaling was my job during the interviews to make sure I would be able to track and take detailed notes. The way that these tools were utilized, the interview questions, again, it was fully done on Zoom and each one of their interviewees had a copy of the questions to be able to follow along with. Um, this became a great jumping board into conversations. Um, several of my interviews were very rigid that I asked a question, got an answer, moved on. Several of my interviews were conversations that I was able to talk for at length 
um, beyond just an uh, answer to my question. Um, the artifacts, like I said, they were not acquired from any of the participants. Um, it was something that I had asked them in the first email in our correspondence and reminded during the interview, but none of them were able to provide me any of the artifacts. And then the journaling took uh, the form of sticky notes for each one of the uh, interviewees. I ended up having several for uh, a couple of the conversations that got a little longer. But this is where I just dotted down some ideas or um, things that were mentioned that would help me remember the interview and be able to use that data um, form of this whole project. The data analysis plan, and again, this is part of the um, um, a proposal was I was following the Braun and Clark's 2006 model. Um, the highlights were becoming familiar with the data, basically reading through the whole entire thing several times. Number two, generating initial codes. As I found new things, I had physical copies. I was um, using highlighters, using pens to mark different areas, questions to myself. Um, number three, search for any themes of the codes. Was there any major themes that I was finding? Reviewing those themes, making sure it was coherent and made sense throughout the whole document, and then defining them, making sure each one of the themes was a core for the whole interview process. And then finally, the write-up. The way that that manifested, I was able to find three uh, themes throughout the whole document. And by document, I mean all of the interviews and the transcripts that were done. Um, the first one was teaching techniques. The second one was challenges in music education. The third one was expectations and recommendations. The way I found those was first the five codes, the codes that um, were abundant and clear throughout the whole document. The first one was challenges. I gave that C1. The second one was expectations. That one was C2. The third one was experiences, C3. Fourth one was influence of teachers' characteristics on experience. That was C4. And the last one was music specialization, which was C5. Once I was able to fully understand and make sure that worked for my whole document, I created this graphic that helped understand and disseminate the data. So the first question about my whole entire um, or my whole dissertation was how instrumental music teachers perceived their undergraduate degree prepared them for a professional career. From that, the themes that I found were teaching techniques on top. Second one was challenges in music education. And then the one below was expectations and recommendations. And then of those, here's how the codes um, were decided from each one of the themes. For teaching techniques, I found experiences. And then the second was influence of teachers' characteristics on experience. The second uh, theme was challenges in music education. The codes were challenges and music specialization. And then the last one is expectations and recommendations. And the code that I found worked best was expectations. Using the data, here is how I found those and was able to keep uh, coding and adding the themes. Um, as an example, interview, e, or sorry, interview six said, there was an attempt to get us out in the schools early, both early on so that we could say, this isn't for me. And then throughout my four years or so in college, there were the sporadic opportunities early on middle and even closer to the end before I did my student teaching to get out in the schools and do work with some of the music teachers. That's the data that I read. From reading that, I was able to decide that that was talking about music specific, uh, specif oh my gosh, excuse me, specialization. Not only is that a teaching technique, but that is so specific in music that they wanted to get them out in the music teacher's classrooms to make sure that worked. Along with this isn't for me when they quoted that, saying this is specific to not just teaching, but music. Again, that fell under the um, theme of challenges in music education. Excuse me. Looking into the themes, the first one again was teaching techniques. Um, the codes I found that were a part of that were experiences and influence of teachers' characteristics on experiences. This theme, teaching techniques, was found in all of the interviews because one of the most substantial topic that the interviewee spoke about was the teaching techniques that they either had or found that they needed to elaborate and expand their teaching toolbox. The second theme that I used was challenges in music education. The two codes were challenges and then music specialization. This theme, challenges in music education, was labeled throughout the interview transcripts when something specific to music was being discussed that include a challenge in teaching. 
And then my third theme was expectations and recommendations, and this had the code of expectations. This expectations and recommendations was something that each interviewee wanted to make sure that they were able to contribute their own ideas on expectations of the music teacher and their recommendations on how to better serve future music teachers. The interviewees were all current music educators who were not only practicing the teaching and music skills, but they were also contributing to the music education. So my findings of this whole uh, dissertation, there were three main takeaways. The first one um, was a mentorship. All of my interviewees spoke about a need or a want to be able to help other music teachers or that they wish they would have had someone guiding them as they were going throughout this. Um, I found this very important. Not only did each one of these have to do student teaching, but after that nine week or 12 week, depending on their university was done, a lot of them felt they missed out on a transition or some sort of mentorship program. Um, they spoke at length that they would gladly reach out and help create a mentorship program, which also showed, and they told me too, that's why they wanted to participate in this uh, research study. They again wanted to just help music education um, together. The second thing I found was more time in the classroom or practicum. Um, not only did they have great time during their student teaching, but they wish, as interview six had said, had spent more time throughout their four years or however long it took them to get their undergraduate in an actual music classroom. Um, just observing and being able to be assisting in any sort of education for students would have helped given more um, understanding and substance to what they were learning in their classes at the university level, which led right into the third thing, real teaching experience practice. Um, and this one is separate than being in the music classroom because being in the music classroom, you could simply observe. This is saying using the skills that they were being taught either in their general education classes or in their specific music education classes, they wanted to be able to take those and try them, get advice and have that ready to go when they have their own classroom. There was two areas that I thought that this was separated. The first one was at the university level. This would be done during the music education undergraduate. Um, the thing was less theoretical and more practical. Again, they could take tons of time and listen to a lecture about best teaching practices, but unless they were able to go in and try those, it was one part of the disconnect of getting the music education degree and then not being able to use their skills right away into the music classroom. Um, the second thing at the university level would be more sessions with local music teachers. Um, not only do we have fantastic professors and um, expert music teachers at the university level, but those people are more focused on preparing the students to become music educators. What all my interviewees talked about was we wanted someone who's in the trenches, as one of them said, to be able to talk with them, get ideas, share their experience, and really have a better understanding of what it's gonna be like to be a music teacher. The second um, division of that was the teacher level. So once you got your music education degree and your teaching job, here are the things that they um, would be able to produce better, more highly effective teachers. The first one was conference attendance. Um, here in Washington State, we have a fantastic um, music education association chapter. We in the Tri, or not in the Tri-Cities, in um, Southeast Washington have our own uh, conference, but we also have a statewide conference. Every other year we meet in the central part of the state where all music educators come together. It's a three to four day event that has several sessions. That is one of the best way each one of my interviewees said that they gained new skills and were able to talk with other teachers about what they can do to become more highly effective in their own classroom. Um, and then the other, other year um, here in Washington State, we do a, a Pacific Northwest Conference that combines several of the states. And again, they talked about what a great experience that was to see what we are doing in our state versus another state and how we can use each other's data to be better for our students. Um, the second thing was newer students, or sorry, newer teachers paired with more experienced teachers. Again, this goes back to the mentorship, but that's something at the teacher level that we would be able to help create better teachers is we have those connections, be able to bounce ideas, get help. Um, they can come just observe the way that they're teaching and using that to become a better, highly effective teacher. 
So my conclusions and recommendations. Again, this was based on what you saw in the last slide. At the university level or the teacher preparations program portion is again less theoretical and more practical with sessions with local music teachers. This is something that universities would be able to create and foster in their own programs, be able to help all others. Second would be at the teacher level, and this would either be by district or by um, um, our music education association's local chapters, is again, promote attendance for our conferences, and then also see if we can pair newer teachers with more experienced, more experienced teachers in a member, mentorship um, capacity. Excuse me. What I found for this was, this is just the scratch of the surface of a topic that needs to be, and I plan to do even more research in as I continue throughout my career. Um, so some future studies and ideas for change um, to conduct interviews at a different time. So I was able to conduct my interviews during summer, but from listening and talking to my colleagues and the interviews, that wasn't the best time. As teachers, we have a robust nine month full focus that we are teaching with our summer that we are more lax. And because I did the interviews during the summer, I believe that is one reason I did not get a bigger um, uh, perspective of interviewees. Um, and so that's one thing I would find interesting if I would go try that, if I would get a bigger widespread participant list or if that would stay the same. <clears throat> Second thing would be expand on the amount of artifacts. Again, I asked them, um, but they did not get to me. I think in the future when I do my next project, since again, I plan to continue with this, um, is to have them prepared for the interview, making sure it's there ready to go. That way I can use that data as well. Um, another thing I think would be helpful in the future studies would be following up with the same teachers a few years later using their same interviews, uh, or not the same interviews, but the same kind of questions to see what they were able to learn either on their own or if, they, if this sparked something that helped create a new um, setup in their current teaching. Um, I also think it would be fantastic to interview teachers outside of the Pacific Northwest. I know there's fantastic music um, teaching performances going uh, nationwide, globally as well. Um, and I was focused in Pacific Northwest because that's where I currently teach and feel that I would have the biggest impact to start with. But this would be something fantastic on a whole national level. How are we preparing music teachers? How are music classrooms um, functioning throughout different states? Um, and then also a different interview of the music education college professors. I think it'd be interesting, not only good to get that data of what is happening there, but it would also be a good self-reflection. As we know, as teachers, that is one of our best tools is self-reflection. How did a lesson go? Are the students understanding this? This may be a good opportunity for college professors to be able to see this and also think, okay, how can, what can I do? How can I change? How can I explain this data to our new generation of future music teachers? Um, the three main studies as I continue forward, the first one would be a study of instrumental middle school teachers or general music education teachers, and then also special specializations of choral, so middle and high school, see what their perceptions are of undergraduate programs prepared them for a professional career. As we know, good teaching is good teaching and music is um, all encompassing. There are specifications that are different between instrumental general, which would be elementary, and then choral. Um, it would be interesting to see how that translates from the college collegiate um, undergraduate programs into a full-fledged teaching career. Um, the second one would how alternative paths, so a post-baccalaureate or master's in teaching, students perceive their degree programs prepared them for a professional career. Um, I have a friend who went into the Marines for the music, and then he went and got his degree in teaching. So I know he comes from a whole different um, background than I do. He was in the Marines, which was more structured and performance-based, and now he's taking that, got his um, teaching degree, and now he'll be teaching using that, versus me who went straight to university, got my teaching degree, along with performing, and now I'm teaching. And again, the last one would be how university teachers and professors perceive their degree programs for their prepared them for a professional career. 
this would be very interesting that they are themselves, their professional career is preparing a new music people, teachers, professors, performers, but how their degrees prepared them for what they are currently doing. So these are all future studies that I think would um, spark from my study. And that is what I have. Um, I, I now welcome all feedback, questions, and conversations. Um, here were my references as well. Um, and I will hand it back over to you. Thank you, Dr. Rajan. Thank you, Joshua. That was wonderful. As you know, um, this is something, this is a topic I was very, very excited and passionate about being in similar situation as you, not instrumental, but general music, getting music ed degree, getting performance and um, yeah, just basically being thrown out there and having to figure out what you needed really to help you be prepared. Um, I have some questions and things I'd like to discuss as you know, being your chair and methodologist, but I'd love to start with either Dr. Sanford or Dr. Baker, since they were both your lovely readers, would either one of you want to start? Dr. Sanford, I see you unmuted. Yeah, I'm happy to start. First of all, Great. excellent work, Josh. I was really impressed. Um, your study is near and dear to my heart, particularly when you mentioned your friend who was in the Marines and then he went or will be starting in teaching. Uh, my dissertation looked at the learning experiences of first year teachers. Two thirds came into teaching from another profession. So mm -hmm. I find that really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, I loved your point about self-reflection. That is key. Um, and I really appreciated how you walked us through your study, how the themes were generated. Questions. Um, what were some of the challenges they reported on? Um, these are folks with two plus years under their belt. I don't know if they have tenure or a continuing contract as we like to call it in Washington state, but mm -hmm. can you elaborate first of all on some of the challenges they might have shared with you um, going into this thing called teaching? Gee, I think I know what it is, but do I? Yeah, um, I have two great examples I'm gonna share with you. Um, the first one was from um, someone who, <laughs> I think I can share this, who I actually did my undergraduate program with. So it's someone who's tracking the same amount of time as I am. Um, which I think was fantastic that he brought up several things that I don't remember we learned, but he remembered learning in uh, our undergraduate program. So, I mean, that was one challenge that I wasn't even going to share, but now I, it makes sense. You know, that's something that I had forgotten. Um, he explained that when he stepped into his, his teaching position, he didn't understand that the, the school itself, and this is his specific, dictated how many concerts he had to do. Um, as music teachers, I, I, I mean, I go from the perception, I'm never going to, I'm gonna accurately push my ensembles as I see fit in the teaching year. And that means one year we do three concerts, awesome. If one year we do seven concerts, that's great. Um, but that was one thing that wasn't taught at our um, undergraduate program was programming of concerts um and then that was something that his teaching or his um school dictated so that was one thing that he had to overcome not only did he have to start preparing lessons to match their concert rigorous concert schedule but then he also had to make sure that he was teaching the music adequately that in the next years they were building on it so they could keep doing more um so that was one thing the second person or the second um hardship that I want to share. Um, one of my participants, he went to a very small school that it was a K through 12. Um, he had, I think, 500 people total in the whole school. So that meant his band was a fraction of that versus a school that has 2000, you know, and it's a bigger program. It was understanding how to pick music to perform. Yes, we would be able to say, oh, you know, we want to play whole first suite in E flat for a uh, the band but he didn't have the instruments but he still wanted to give them that authentic experience so he had to work not only on transcribing arranging and picking all that out he also had to reach out and figure out legally can you do that with this music um as teachers we're like yes we need to scaffold we need to make sure it's easy we need to give the um iep the whatever it is 
but also we have to remember at what level are we changing that that we can't give that authentic music experience so that was one thing that was missing from the undergraduate program was how to arrange the music in a way that would be coherent but then also how to match what where you are going to teach um he even talked about when he had students auditioning for honor groups his students were never picked and he's like they are so talented i'm working so hard with them but people who were so he was at a rural school who were at a more metropolitan area had access to more um uh, uh, sources such as private lessons or even right now zoom lessons they had the ability to get on that the rural school that this person was at there was a farm school so most of the students had to go home work on the farm probably um, hard labor come back and they were just in music for the love of it so it it was disheartening for him they worked so hard with these students to try to get you know to that level of music but again that's where they were and that was one thing i used in my teaching too you got to match the student where they are and hope push them there um, so the two main things number one matching what the school is expecting and then number two where your students are and what you can do with them and that's one thing that was missing from the undergraduate programs great um, another question really relates to politics mm -hmm. you know you have these techniques um you get the experience in school and then you're put into the school mm -hmm. um and you have to negotiate that. It's it's all the tacit learning, the stuff that nobody tells you. You sort of learn through observation, or maybe in the teacher's lounge. Hey, watch out for so and so, or mm -hmm. uh, you know, a parent calling the school and saying, "Why is Mr. Lindbergh doing X and Y and Z?" Did your teachers mention that? That's sort of a slippery slope here with teaching. Excuse me, with teaching. You know thinking back to the interviews no no one really brought that up um okay i i think the only thing close to that was there was a disagreement between an instrumental and their colleague who did choral but i mean that i, I think got resolved you know but no they really didn't bring up that side you know um so i yeah okay um, and then in your lit review, and I, I should have written this down, did you explore retention um, of teachers, the so-called teacher burnout? I don't know if those topics came up as why folks leave teaching. Gee, I don't no, feel I, supported in my school or, oh, this wasn't what I expected. Or as you said, am I ready? Yeah, no, I didn't explore that. Um, I was mostly focused on just trying to get that first day in their first job. I didn't look beyond that. Okay. And then the last question is, did any of your teachers, um, they may not have used these words, but shared things like, I feel like an imposter. You know, I thought I knew what I was doing, but whoa, this is really different. Um, I Being think so-called imposter. Yeah. The only one that kind of had that was the one who explained at the, the rural farm school, again, that he, he came in with that I'm a big band guy. We're going to do Sousa. We're going to do, um, you know, all the classics stepped in and realized nope you know i have one clarinet one trumpet and a tuba what am i going to do um he he also explained well well he he bounced around to different other schools too um one school that he got to had a higher um hispanic population so that summer before he learned mariachi and offered mariachi and that was the biggest his program ever was um so he did not touch a mariachi instrument didn't even hear the music in college, but then stepping into his position there, he was like, well, I'm the mariachi teacher. Uh, so I assume if I would have dug deeper, he may have used that word Im imposter, you know, but no, that was not um, used in that sense. Great. Uh, thank you very much. Those are all the questions I have at the moment. Thank you, Dr. Sanford. Hi there, Josh. Is it okay if I pop in now? Dr. Baker. <laughs> Um, so I, I, great job. I, I just, it was so great to see how everything put together. And I love that we get to talk to you from the educational and teaching perspective. I've had, um, experience in the classroom as well, uh, before working in higher ed and something that's near and dear to me is, um, 
what college students want from their professors. That's what I've explored in my uh, research and studies. So just as a comment, the one part of your future investigation I was really excited about was that you would like to take that to the university level um, and explore uh, what college professors have control of in their departments and what they're what they're able to um, implement with the programs. So I'm excited for you uh, there. So I just had a couple of quick questions. Um, the one is, I, I know you had mentioned during the interviews that you were nervous, that, uh, I'm sorry, you had issue with the student, the interviewees with the artifacts, mm -hmm. um, bringing and preparing for the interview. Was there any other challenges to your study? Besides that, the biggest one I, I had, I had, uh, when Dr. Raj and I had talked about what the sample size was going to be, we agreed that it was okay. It was smaller because it was the okay. interview based versus data numbers. Right. Um, yeah. That was one challenge. I wish I could have had more, um, more people to interview. Um, with more data, you get more information. Um, besides that, no, I, I, it was a really clean um, process. Again, a, a silver lining of, of the global pandemic we're in is that everyone was up and able to use Zoom. Um, so I was mm -hmm. able to get people from across Washington State um, and we were at set time. Um, I, I had it open between seven and five and they could pick any time within that. So I was I was very much the like, please just come. I would love to talk to you. Um, so that was great. I think again, the only thing was I, the smaller sample size and then the artifacts. And I, I question if I would have done these in person, if that would have triggered something in their mind of, oh yes, I need these to go with me versus I'm gonna roll out of bed, open mm -hmm. my computer. I, I mean, they didn't do that, but. Um, right. So I think that would be the only two things, you know, was the size and the artifacts. I was thinking the barriers with the pandemic would have also been a limitation for you and also a benefit, like you can have access to, to mm -hmm. a larger, yeah, the population and, and permissions with IRB to allow uh, to allow that type of um, interviews. Mm -hmm. uh, the next question I have was, um, you know, I know you went through all of your findings and you had, you really did. I'm glad you, you didn't have a lot of challenges because you did have a solid structure and your methodology um, was, you, you went through your themes. Was it anything that was surprising for you? That Did, did you maybe, I, I know we try to go in and we don't have a hypothesis. We want data to emerge from the qualitative information, mm -hmm. but was there a surprise or anything that stood out that you're like, oh, I didn't think of, you know. Something you know, I think the biggest thing that stood out, um, again, I, I come from my full music side who did the undergraduate in education as well. And I'm, I'm, I don't want to use the word I'm learning academia, but I am because a lot of my undergrad and masters was performance based. Um, was so many of my, I think four out of the six, seven, if you count the other one, said they wanted more general education classes, um, not just music specific classes. Um, because I think we get in our heads that, oh, the music classroom, it's not like any other. We don't use the PD that's given to us at our school districts. We do. We just use it in our own way. Um, and I think that's, uh, 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 I, it's a sour word that's brought up a lot. And I remember this when I was in my undergraduate as well. They're like, oh, I got to go to Education 101. I'm going to sit there and we're <laughs> going to talk about whatever. I know I want to be practicing my instrument. Yes, but when you step into that classroom, they don't care if you're the math teacher. They don't care if you're the science teacher. You're a teacher. You're just going to use music as your way. So yes, we're still figuring out our expectations for our students. Yes, we still have a specific classroom management. Yes, we still have a setup of how they get in, grab their instruments, sit down and look up at you. Um, and that's one thing I think they want more of, but we just, we don't want to say we want more of that. So. Great. Thank you. That's, that's just my, my two questions. Uh, great job. Hmm. Thank you very much. Let Dr. Ray. Thank you. Thanks to both of you. Um, Joshua, I have to piggyback off of that because I think that's really important. Um, my two masters, one of them is in early childhood education, and then mm -hmm. I did my master's in music ed, and I was blown away by the number of people that didn't even know basic child development mm -hmm. theorists or any, right? Because there's so, it's so music and instrument focused. Can you go back to your findings page? Because there were a lot of things that you spoke about in this discussion now um, that I'd like to see listed. I think it's mm -hmm. in your, I think it's in your document, yeah. but if you were to present this again, I think it would be interesting to have more slides for your findings. So okay. to really elaborate and pull out all of these things that you shared with us, 
Um, so if mentorship is one, I would have loved to have seen a slide with little, like just think of maybe five or six bullets of what that would look like. Do you want mentorship meaning what? More professional development? Um, mentorship with another teacher, like like team teaching? Um, what what were some examples of mentorship? If you could like list two or three. Yeah, so the first one was have someone that can come in, observe you, and then disseminate after, you know, how okay. what, worked, what wasn't working. The other one was to go watch some other teacher. So like you're like paired with another teacher, um, and you can either go into each other's classroom, that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, and then the third one too was literally just have someone you check in with like once a month. So one of the teachers said that they had a, a senior teacher that took them out to coffee once a month. And they first, first couple times they talked about you, you know, teaching and the rest of the time they talked about life. And it just was that. Breath and so breath. this is, and so this is after, this is after they started teaching in a school. Correct. So what I want, I still think there's a little bit of a connection that could be made in your discussion of you're, you're asking them what they needed in their undergrad uh -huh. to prepare them for this. Oh, so okay. do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. So yes, I love my, my, I love a mentor to come and observe me when I'm actually in school. How does that translate to undergrad? Okay. What do we need to do and in undergrad to be able to get to that point? Do we need to have students observe each other? while like they're doing a mock lesson and give feedback. So then we're getting, do you see what I'm saying? That yeah. that one connection is is missing there. Um, I'd love, but again, if you had a slide for mentorship, um, I think some of the other things you mentioned are missing in your findings that you shared, but I guess just aren't written here. And yeah. I want you to go back into your actual document and make sure those are there. Things mm -hmm. like resources mm -hmm. um, that they needed when they were actually teaching, right? I don't have enough instruments to have a, you know, put on a great SUSA performance. Um, how, how does that connect back to undergrad? What, what do we need to be teaching in our undergrad classes that when we send a, a student out after they've graduated to go mm -hmm. teach, hey, I'm teaching you in my undergrad class, you probably are not gonna have any money. You're not gonna have any instruments. How are we preparing our undergrad students then? Be able to do that. To, to, right? So, what, yeah. so that I wanna see more of those connections. I wanna see more of those in your discussion. Okay. Um, and then in your recommendations, uh, do we need to be teaching undergraduate students how to do a budget, mm -hmm. right? So, or to partner with local communities um, to be able to get donations for instruments, right? Things like that. Um, I love that you mentioned location as being a challenge because, you know, rural versus mm -hmm. urban um, and given the diversity of Washington state, right? You have mm -hmm. Seattle and then you have something that looks completely different over the mountains. Right. Um, how do you prepare students for that? I want that undergrad connection again. So those are the challenges they had. What, again, how, what did they need? Yeah, um, yeah. And that's what I'd like to see a little bit more of. Could you maybe speak to that a little bit? Because I wrote that like six times. What did they actually need um, yeah. in their undergrad based on these challenges? Yeah. Um, uh, some of these I can only guess because they did not specifically tell me. Um, but from what they said, like the one uh, teacher who is in the rural place, he he would have needed more arranging skills um, to be able to arrange music out. Um, and then the other side is I I don't think we would be able to do this unless we brought in an expert. But again, the copyright infringement laws to make sure in the educational setting what is allowed and what's not allowed. Um, so I'd love to see you dig a little deeper there. So these are your findings. These are what yeah. they needed while they're in the classroom, while they're actually teaching. Okay. Um, in your discussion, I want you to make those connections for us. Okay. Um, yes, maybe it wasn't explicitly stated, but you're also, mm -hmm. you have all of this literature in chapter two about what you need or what we're teaching in undergraduate programs, right? Mm -hmm. You have all the course content. You have, you even talk to them about what classes they took. Um, that's where you can say in your discussion, you know, this is what they're saying are their challenges. This is what's actually being taught. This is the disconnect. This is, and you as the researcher now are saying, this is what we need to include in our undergraduate. Maybe we need a class where we do budgeting and resources and right. Maybe we need to include that as part of our repertoire. Maybe we need to be able to have students go out into different, not just do student teaching in, you know, one fancy perfect school. Maybe student teaching should be broken up into like 12 weeks and, you know, three weeks in a rural setting or three weeks in an urban, that sort of thing. So I want those sorts of recommendations from you to okay. come out in the discussion. Okay. Um, and then to take that again and then really 
kind of filter it down to your actual recommendations because um, like one of yours was professional development. Are these, were all six of them, you know, part of NAFME? Have they been going to conferences? Did you have that discussion with them? Yes, yes, I did. They, they're all, they all talked about conferences. That's why it was one of my main ones. Great. So yeah, and I'm I'm be curious to know if anybody's like if they attend anything during you know the pandemic or, um, yeah, did they talk about if they're plan did they attend any conferences that you know were going on or local? I don't know with even the Washington State Music Educators. Did you guys have a conference? We did a virtual. Yeah, yeah. But so I, did they? No, attend I did that? not ask them that question. Okay. Yeah. So and I I like that they're saying that they needed that. Um, so then again, where's the connection? What would you recommend? Or where do you see that as a connection to undergrad? Mm -hmm. well, are you asking me now? It would be yeah. to attend it as a undergraduate student. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like take here, your students, take your undergraduate students. Exactly. And go to yeah. a national conference or a Zoom conference together, right? I think, mm -hmm. yeah. So I want to see some of those um, connections, but great. A um, couple of other things in the beginning when you, this is just minor stuff, methodology mm -hmm. stuff. Um, I think there were still places where you were saying this will be done, um, but you already did it. So just to make in, sure. In, you, the, in PowerPoint or in the. Yeah, PowerPoint. in the PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Okay. If you, if you go to setting and sample that slide um, and then the one before it. Oh, that one. Yeah. So an initial email correspondence will be sent. It's all oh, really, yeah. it's just okay. minor things, but it's important um, before you finish and send it off to ProQuest just to double check that in your document okay. as well. My only other question was, did you find any differences like based on their own specializations within instrumental teaching amongst like what they focused on, anything like that? Did that come up at all? No, not specifically like that i think the way that question i could say based off the data was i could tell which ensemble that the teacher taught was their favorite oh because um, <laughs> i had a couple of teachers that spoke specifically about their jazz band which makes yeah. me guess that they didn't play strings um and then oh. i had the one that talked about orchestra and i know this person plays clarinet so i i know that they focused on symphony orchestra versus just standard string only orchestra yeah great and i'd be interested in like knowing more i think of how their specific school site limited again mm -hmm. what kind of ensemble and types of music they were able to focus on um yeah. i did ask the question of the um of all my participants what classes do they currently teach um and oh. that was um used simply to make sure Number one, they are an instrumental music teacher, um, but you know what what their focus is on. I would love to see a table of that in your findings. Um, okay. I think that's really interesting to know that somebody maybe had a background in mariachi, but then came into, you know, what has to teach band with no instruments or focused on jazz um, and didn't do orchestra or could only do, you know, string quartets or something. I think that would just be an interesting mm -hmm. finding for us to be able to see, especially because you and I understand you know, all these different genres within instrumental music, but somebody who's reading this that has no music background, you know, that would be just really relevant. Okay. Data. Yeah. Um, yeah. So are there any other thoughts or questions? I just have to make one quick comment, Reka. I just loved your ideas about what they could do at the undergraduate level. I'm thinking a budget class. I'm thinking um, professors giving the students a scenario, okay, you've got a clarinet, you've got a tuba, and you've got drums, yeah, go out and create, you know, what program will you put together? How will you deal with the irate parent who says, no, my kid is playing the trumpet? How, those sorts of so-called soft skills would be so important mm -hmm. and help people feel more successful. I really appreciated your comments on this. Yeah, uh, I know as a... No, I, yeah, I appreciate that. And again, it's just ideas I'm pulling from Joshua's data. So I just want to see you make those connections in the in your presentation whenever you share this again, and also yeah. to go back into your discussion and make that more, um, more concrete for us. Because yeah, I mean, if that's what they're telling you, they didn't have money, that's a reality for most music teachers. Or yeah. again, the irate parents, I can't tell you how many musicals I've done where everybody wants their kid to be the main role. And sorry, it doesn't work that way. You can't have 10 <laughs> Dorothy's in The Wizard of Oz, right? So um, yeah, I think that's, I just, it's all there, Joshua. It's all there. I just want to see that you taking what they said mm -hmm. and you as the expert now and the researcher making those 
connections in the discussion and then the recommendations for us of this is what's missing in your undergraduate program. Yeah. Thank you. Great. Any other thoughts, questions, comments? All right, uh, Paul, can you move us to a, another Zoom room to talk? Um, Joshua, don't go anywhere. Okay. Don't run away yet. <laughs>